Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast, this time on chapter 10 of the Basics of Web Design book. This YouTube also helps with earlier versions of this book. In chapter 10, you'll learn how to code this last web page in our Pacific Trails Resort project, and that is the form. A web form is a place for users to enter data and submit it to a server. And if you have the form filled out correctly and click the submit button, you'll know if you're successful if you get a response, a PHP file that provides information about the fields and the data that you've provided. Now back on my homepage, I have created three different YouTubes for creating an HTML form. And they go through the HTML that's required to create a form, which is pretty extensive because you see many new different HTML elements, as well as many new different HTML attributes, each of which is important for the creation of that form. So in this YouTube, I want to highlight some of the CSS issues of styling the form. If you're doing the Pacific Trails project, the author styles the form so that it's responsive. And it could be done in a number of ways, but in this case, we know we have a grid applied at large screen size to make the two columns. In chapter 10, we even put a grid inside this second column for just the form elements. And that figure is shown in the book in figure 10.38. So you're going to have a grid inside a grid. And let me show this to you through the developer's tools. If I open that page up and open up my main section and dig into the developer's tools and select that form, I can see that at a smaller screen size, a flex box is applied to that form and the flex flow direction is column. Again, I can temporarily remove these styles, see how those form elements are going to line up or not in that form. So these rules are applied in the global or top or mobile style sheet as they are going to apply to all screen sizes unless overridden by subsequent media queries. And that's exactly what happens as I come to the tablet size, then look, the styles applied to the form, let's go select the form again, are different. They're applied at the minimum width of 600 pixels. And I have several new styles. I have three rules that apply the grid, the grid itself, the gap between the grid elements, and the size of the different two columns. Then I also have a couple rules that address the width of the grid as well as its maximum width. As I make this screen even larger and I go to large screen size, the form element is still selected and still has that same grid applied. So let's look at the code in the CSS to see how this is done. When I look at the CSS, first of all, it's really important to realize that the form styles that apply to a small screen size need to be positioned for your first media query. So I've got them at the bottom of my top or global style sheet. And that's where we had our flex box in the small screen size with a column orientation. The input element and text area elements also have a declaration of a small bottom margin. Then when I get to the medium display, I've added all of these styles. I've changed the styles for the form from display flex, display grid, because now I want that two column grid for the elements on the form because I've got more room. I also have a style set up for the input element. If it's a submit button, I'm going to put it in the column between lines two and three, and I'm going to make it with nine M's. Now these styles that I apply at tablet or medium display go ahead and apply at large display. So I don't need to put any form styles in on the large display because again, we remember that the styles are cumulative. So the global styles that apply to small phone size screens are at the top and they flow through that style sheet unless they're modified or added to with the styles in the medium display. All the styles from the global and medium display areas apply to large screens unless they're changed or modified in the large display media query. So there are different ways to style a responsive 
form on a web page, but this author dipped back into Chapter 8 and applied a flex box to the form element so that all the elements inside that box were flexibly positioned at small screen sizes. And then with the power of media queries, when that page gets beyond 600 pixels, the author removes the flex box and applies a grid of two different columns. And that grid of two different columns then is applied at greater than 600 pixels and flows through, carries through, no matter how large our screen is. And that's what aligns the labels and the input boxes and the submit button in that form. Thank you.